What the fuck is up, everybody? This is John Escudero, and you're watching slash listening to Dirt Sheet Radio, a professional wrestling podcast slash newscast where I'm never alone, and I will introduce you to my boys. Hey, it's me. I'm Nick. I'm one of the boys. Guess what? John is truly never alone, and I have a question for all of you listening to this right now. What would happen if Cell was included in the Tournament of Power? That is a good question. Uh, I would hate to see the. I would hate to see Gohan teamed up with some. <laughs> it's, it's so freaking weird. Because uh, yeah, then, too, think about Cell's training, and on top of that, because he's got Frieza's, you know, cells in there, so he's training and getting stronger like that. But he's also got that Saiyan blood. This is messed up because we're just leaving Greg in the cold. <laughs> Greg, get in here. <laughs> yeah. That's fucked up. We've let him in now. For Hello, all. Listeners. <laughs> My question is, is Piccolo still the best father in Dragon Ball? Yes. <laughs> always, always was. Actually, you know Not what? Not a stepdad, no. just a dad who stepped up. <laughs> <laughs> Man, hello everybody. This is a podcast about professional wrestling, in case you hadn't noticed. What? Uh, it's the end of the year, almost. We got yeah, one episode yeah, of Dirt Sheet yeah. Radio left <laughs> for the year. And uh, we're in the midst of our best of year-end awards over on our Dirt Sheet Radio social medias. We're, uh, we're currently in round one. We'll be in round two before uh, before next week is over, and then we'll reveal the winners uh, in multiple videos. So it's it's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, but I felt like it doesn't matter if I ask you guys. Uh, it's the end of the year, and barring some surprise uh, final one week of insane insane uh, performances, we should know who our wrestlers of the year are right i feel like there's no way that can change in a month <laughs> it had to be insane that'd have to be like the sickest seven day stretch of wrestling <laughs> matches you've ever seen in your fucking life i don't know how but Heath Slater just had the seven greatest matches in professional wrestling history seven star <laughs> slater <laughs> Not even the seven seven greatest matches, but somehow the seven greatest minutes How did that eclipsed the entire year. <laughs> the goat. <laughs> How did you steal the year with one week left? Incredible performance. No, I. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to ask you guys: What did you, who who was your best wrestler of the year two thousand and twenty three, the year of our Lord Mitsuhao Misawa? <laughs> hmm. what do you got nick you know for the the poll thing that we did i submitted will i am osprey i think just so much he's had some great matches around the world and on top of that he's set to have some more barn burners when he signs with uh, aew which he really? is pretty much signed but you know once he's fully integrated and again, he's not going to be left out in the cold when it comes down to Japan either. Exactly. Okay, that's one of the best things about it is he could still work with New Japan. For so sure. That's a lot probably of, why they agreed in the first place. Exactly. But mm. there's another thing too. And the only reason I didn't list him for myself on there is because I think next year is going to be even better for him. And I mentioned this earlier during the Dynamite recap. Swerve Strickland's another guy that it was hard to choose, but I think he's going to have a great year next year. Swerve Circle in 2023 has been a rise, but I feel like 2024 is the year where he's going to establish himself as the guy for AEW. And just uh, oh, yeah. he was on he was on screen with MJF tonight, and I was like, it was crazy because this might have been the first time in a while where someone dwarfed MJF. Uh, not not just in like the promo, uh, in the words, but just. The whole cadence and the and presence, presence, and they yeah. kind of stood over him. Like I felt like MJF was out. He was also taller. He was also taller, <laughs> but I felt like he, it was. It bad. felt like Samoa Joe needed to come in sooner. Yeah, and like, pull him away. Why'd you leave him? It was swear like that. That's scary. 
<laughs> oh, now Samoa Joe and Swerve in a promo battle. That would be fun. Be- Samoa Joe just, I, I, I hate to make this, <laughs> this analogy, but like <laughs> Samoa Joe walks into that promo like the, like the dude sort of protecting his boy in prison. Just like, hey, hey, hey. my bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody touches my bitch but me. Oh, man. I, this how it came off. <laughs> What about you, Greg? We, we, who's your wrestler of the year? As I go change my wrinkled shirt. Oh, uh, jeez. <laughs> I, I maintain that my argument is is a controversial one Ooh. because I am just balancing it on the amount of time that not only the wrestling community has put into it, but the amount of time that we here at Dirt Sheet Radio have put into it. Okay, I'm ready. I'd argue that the wrestler of the year the most influential wrestler of the year is CM Punk. You know, that's a very controversial choice, but again, I could see 100% why you'd say that. And again, look, we've talked about him every freaking week. This we year, devoted an entire episode <laughs> to his year. Yeah. Like the guy doesn't have to do anything. He could sell out an entire arena in a major city with just a rumor of his name. <laughs> And then he came back to the WWE. It's considered one of the most monumental comebacks in professional wrestling. Everyone can't help but talking about CM Punk. And guess what? You know what happened when the thing when the numbers came out? CM Punk segments highest rated. Yep, that spike. That was a spike right there. And merchandise CM sales. CM Punk drives the, the numbers. So yeah, that's my call. Is it? Is it? Does is he the guy with the biggest five star matches or the most, you know, in ring content? No. But he's the most talked about. Yeah, yeah. I am not going to argue with your choice for wrestler of the year. <laughs> I am remaining as diplomatic <laughs> as possible. Crazy. John just removed Greg from the channel. So no. <laughs> I don't know what happened. He was such a good host. Why did I get fired? <laughs> Uh yeah. Oh, no, I um what is this? Is this my termination email? What's going on? Yeah. I got my re- what? <laughs> my wrestler of the year. <laughs> I came down to Will Osprey and John Bryant said he was scared and, uh, for his life. Yeah. I would have sim- I would have simply fought back. <laughs> <laughs> I have well, one of the many big beefy men you have stand by. <laughs> I forgot I employ monsters. Get him. Get him now. <laughs> John would have simply per- thrown punches and then fired him. First person to rip off the Pepsi tattoo and bring it to me has a Christmas bonus in their future. <laughs> hey, Hobbs, you want to push? <laughs> wow. I got man. 13 championships in this fucking company. I'll give you two of them. This bring me back his I'm, head. This man asked for scalps. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah no I couldn't choose between Osprey and Brian but since Nick chose Osprey I will choose Brian uh he made it easy for me uh it's just it's so when been, Osprey versus Brian that has to ha- that has to you have <laughs> to do that at least once uh I don't know if you do it now in the uh in the final months of Brian's full time career maybe you should just in case you don't get to do it later on but. Uh, get that shit out of the way. Get that done. Brian Danielson announced that this would be his final full-time year in professional wrestling and then proceeded to... Were those the specific words he used, full-time yeah, year? Yeah, full-time year. He's that, said... That- yeah, that that is the cable guy scene of it all. Yeah, yeah. He's No, he's been pretty open about the fact that he's not going to be retired. Um, Tony Khan has also said that they're going to be keeping him around. So, like... It, it, he's not retiring, but he is okay. ending his full time career at Wembley. So he's but they haven't so... said they haven't said Wembley, but they've said like you know he signed in August and he will be at Wembley Stadium and his contract yeah, expires yeah. in August. So like it's pretty fucking obvious that his last match is gonna be at Wembley Stadium. <laughs> Consistent illusions. Yeah. <laughs> it's the so basically by that Brian, after that point, Brian Danielson is gonna be like the occasional special attraction. He's like the best version of the Undertaker. <laughs> like the, 
Uh, yeah. No, I mean, besides the fact that he's just like my wrestler of every year, my wrestler of the the, the, the century, the decade. Brian Danielson keeping up the Wembley streak for the next 20 years. <laughs> right? No, <laughs> I mean, like, it, it, <laughs> sometimes I feel like I like Brian so much that I would call him wrestler of the year anyway. Like, he could have had no matches this year, and he's wrestler of the fucking year. But he's <laughs> legitimately, I mean, since... The year started with the match against MJF for the fucking Iron Man match. The matches leading into that with Rouge and the fucking Lucha's Bandito. And it was like six straight matches leading into MJF because they did that storyline where he had to, where if he lost, he lost his title shot or some shit. And it's just been a constant streak of Brian has the greatest fucking matches, gets an injury, out for six weeks, back. Continues to have a streak of the greatest fucking yeah. matches. Uh, gets injured, doesn't stay out of the ring long enough. <laughs> comes back, continues to have a streak of the greatest fucking matches. I have not sat through a single 2023 Brian match and thought, man, that was under. That was under. That was subpar. Like I, Brian Danielson gets on the on my screen, and it's a guaranteed fucking great time he's a top yeah. caliber wrestler and it's not just in the ring have you been seeing these fucking promos like have you seen these backstage promos after this continental classic meditating brian <laughs> brian who loves you brian who has to teach you a lesson <laughs> brian, i have so much love for willa <laughs> he could have been my son I love I Daniel love Garcia. I, I wanted to love you. <laughs> I guess I should I guess I was gonna talk about this later, but then I'm talking about him now. Uh so I might as well talk about it. I think that in this final year of his career, we've watched Brian basically pro prove objectively to to the world that he is one of the greatest wrestlers to live. <laughs> one of the greatest wrestlers oh, yeah. to ever breathe breath. <laughs> like, yeah, he's in the, the goats. he's in the vaunted like Ric Flair conversations. He's in the Holly yeah, Race conversations. You know, it's that serious. Yeah, it is. And, yeah. and all of your old favorites, like, he's probably better than them. And they would love him. <laughs> that's that's the thing too. Like they might not be able to party with him, but they, no. as a, as a wrestler, yeah. they would love his style. They would love his aggression. Holly was okay. like, what do you mean you don't eat the meat? <laughs> I just... <laughs> You're going to take the shot with me. <laughs> my my affinity for Brian Danielson is well documented. Everybody knows that I love Brian Danielson. And I have thought that he is the greatest fucking wrestler of all time for a little while longer than I think some other people have. I... I can think, personally say it took me a little bit to warm up to him at first, but I just I wasn't as educated a viewer yet. Like I go back yeah. and I go, oh yeah, I realized what I was missing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, admittedly, like if you're early, if you're early in your wrestling viewing, and you come across one of Brian's, especially long, early in your non WWE viewing, yeah, right, it's and, a big deal. And you come across one of Brian's fifty minute. Ring of Honor World Championship Classics with the first 15 minutes where he's doing a lot of limb work and dodging and probably being a dick because he's really going to be a dick. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. like, it's not going to be... A it's not going to be anything compared to what you're used to on WWE or fucking or even any somewhere else on the card on the same fucking Ring of Honor card. Yeah. Brian's match style is advanced. Uh, yeah. But I, I feel like even back then, you know, he was great. Everybody knew he was great, and people called him the best in the world, and it wasn't something he came up with. Like, people just called him the best in the world because he was, at the time, the best in the world. And he went to WWE, and uh, he's not – you're not having those kind of matches anymore, so he yeah. doesn't get known as the best in the world anymore. But I feel, in my opinion, that his time in the WWE uh, – under that system and having to work within those constraints helped him develop into the actual greatest wrestler of all fucking time. Oh yeah. He's here. He already right. had, he already had the skill. Like that was apparent 
early on. People have known Brian as an incredible pro- professional wrestler since. It's like watching a baby play the piano. Like, that thing is going to be a genius. We all know. <laughs> but he fucking comes to the WWE and they continuously give him the worst fucking stories you could possibly give somebody. Some of the most jobber you cannot recover from this shit stories that you've ever seen a top caliber wrestler involved in. And 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 unique unique to Brian. I can't think of too many other guys doing it. Unique to Brian for several months or maybe even a year or so had the commentary actively rooting against him. Burying him. Yep. And, and you, <laughs> Michael you Cole's think? job, despite being the baby face play by play guy, was to absolutely dump on Daniel Bryan. And everything he had done before, it doesn't matter, you see. This is we the gave big him, leagues. We gave him Flight of the Valkyries because that's boring. <laughs> but he took... What he do you took, mean they're cheering at it? <laughs> other other less talented you know wrestlers... It's, it's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you know, you know, it's, it's the fucking Grinch at the end of the movie just going, I took everything from him. Why are they singing? They are <laughs> dancing and cheering. They're chanting yes. <laughs> that's pretty much that's exactly what it was that's, hey, that's was, them right Christmas. before Wrestlemania 30 going we've taken everything from him How I mean a better in? a better run company at the time would have done those things on purpose to build him up oh, afterwards sure. but that wasn't the that wasn't the, what was the happening the greatest exactly. tragedy the greatest tragedy of all time is that WWE will forever be able to tell you that that was one cohesive story yeah, that WrestleMania 30 run, that incredible story <laughs> that they stumbled upon and fought against all the way the through. monster video. That they never wanted to have. Yeah. It only happened because the 2023 wrestler of the year left the company. But that... <laughs> 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 I didn't see Brian Daniels. Greg's imposing his beliefs again. <laughs> what? I... I'm not a Catholic. What are you talking about? <laughs> Worse, you're a CM Punk fan. <laughs> there is. Hey, listen, you have the stained glass shirt. You were just as bad. I had. I lost that thing at yeah, a Ring I of Honor. Too, at a Ring of I Honor. Lost a lot of my CM Punk shirts. Uh, I had. I had the first. The, the, when the, WWE I, starts dropping those retro joints, I'm jumping on them. Absolutely. Had, talking about retro CM Punk shirts, I had the Lucky Seven. Like, was it Lucky Seven shirt with the cards when he still was like a fake? Oh, really? Mu- yeah, like a fake Muay Thai <laughs> Muay Thai wrestler. Yeah, yeah. You I had. I had. Muay Thai. I, had the, I had the first Straight Edge Hardcore shirt. I have the. Uh, I had the the cool like straight edge society like black and white lightning bolt gimmick. I, I remember the, the one where it's the, was so fucking cool. the the fist with the arrows in it. I love that one. Yes, I heard it. I remember that one. I have... getting uh, getting back to the Brian thing because I I wanted to lay this out. Oh, I yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like other wrestlers in his in his position in the WWE they would have. Crumbled. complained they would have crumbled they would have yeah. done a shoot interview afterwards later on they would have got on twitter to be mad about it and their fan base would have been like yeah man they gave him bullshit he never had a chance they would have gone back to the indies it would have been a very there would have yeah. been a very impassioned yeah, yeah. promo they didn't give me anything they they booked me they had the commentary bury me they had the girl shit on me uh yeah but he took all that shit and he just got over and he took it and got it over oh, and God. took it and got it over. Reminded me of the Bella angle. The Bella angle. He took the Bella angle that was garbage and he married one. He just exactly. fucking turned every piece of shit they gave him. And then after he gold. married the Bella, they were like, here, here's the AJ mm-hmm. angle. They're like, wait now. <laughs> Yeah, you you get stuck with this. And he takes that and he turns that into gold. They say, hey, we're burying you at WrestleMania. 12 seconds in the opener. Turn the fans and Brian. It's fucking gold now. Kicks off his WWE career. Yeah. He was able to, he was able to work, like I said, work under all these constraints and become a complete version of a WWE wrestler while still suppressing all his fucking talent in the ring. Like every attempt to, to hurt him just made him more over. Yeah. So uh, he come he gets to have basically the greatest part run he could possibly have in the WWE after injury. He comes back. He gets a full run as WWE champion, the ultimate character version of himself. He achieved full 
Daniel Bryan's ultimate potential. It was completed. Like he has a full Hall of Fame WWE career under his belt. And when he was done with that, he left the company, took off the shackles, unleashed his full self that now has this ultimate character version as well. So he's the ultimate wrestler, the ultimate character. Removes and it's the weighted clothing. He is free. <laughs> He's free to tell all the in-ring stories he wants, however he wants them. He can bleed. He can break. He can do his fucking seizures. He can fucking... Oh Cuss, 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 cuss. He's injured for real? <laughs> Attack my injury. <laughs> I have a broken orbital bone. Please work it. What? <laughs> Brian, what? What? He, um, it was, it was where for a long time I thought he was the greatest wrestler in the world, but after this year, I can say that without, pe without people fighting back. They Not just hesitation. go, they Not just, I mean, I without. never... That's why I hesitated to say that because I never hesitated to say Brian Danielson is the greatest fucking wrestler alive. But now I can say that and you can't fight me back. Like you can't, you can't say shit about it because I will be like, let me present to you this fucking objective. John just pulls proof. out the freaking stick in the PowerPoint <laughs> presentation. And this was the greatest Iron Man match of all time. And this one, like, come on, man. This so we is start in January. This is my wrestler of the year, my wrestler of the decade, the century, the lifetime. Brian Danielson is the GOAT. To Brian me. Danielson I think. is wrestling. Brian Danielson was so good that he scared Impact Wrestling. He's my American wrestling GOAT. I think if I have a Mount Rushmore... Said, we can't have him wrestle Kurt Angle. Mm -mm, we can't have that shit. God, that, was, that was the universe working against us because... <laughs> <laughs> that was the uni The universe knows that. That wrestling would have become too powerful if that <laughs> match took place. <laughs> no, I uh, I have a Mount Rushmore. It's Brian's obviously on it. It's Brian. It's Ric Flair. Sorry, it's Brian Ric Flair. It's Misawa, and it's uh, Manami Toyota because I feel like they are the four ultimate wrestlers in their worlds like the ultimate women's wrestler the ultimate entertainment wrestler the ultimate pro wrestler wrestler and the ultimate american wrestler like that is mount rushmore right there i don't feel i feel like obviously you know you could put john has forsaken mexico i can't fit a fifth person on there <laughs> so mount <Done>. rushmore. <laughs> i think with lucha they said, Libre, what about lucha john said no no. I said no. <laughs> I'll I'll give you Brian. No, <laughs> I was fucking up. He uh. He said Brian went to Mexico. I think if I had to pick a lucha, like it's obvious. Obviously, like in my lifetime, you know, Rey Mysterio was the yeah. fucking was the one, right? But then somebody's grandfather's gonna be really mad if I don't say like uh, uh Sa Mil Mascaras or El Santo. Like yeah. El Santo is people's fucking Jesus, you know? Go, like, go, yeah. go, go. you know, like. Those people are a little more obvious. It's hard to fight against. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like to, to invoke a forsaken name. There is a very funny story about how I think uh, Del Rio said in be in people's homes there is Rey Mysterio and then Jesus. Yeah, I mean it's like that, <laughs> and I, and with Rey Mysterio, it's like it's he's unarguably the most famous uh, luchador uh, of his time. Which There's is ironic no... because he spent more time here than he ever spent in proper lucha. He got a cartoon now, completely independent. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. Of it's WWE cartoon and Network, everything. Right? It's just Cartoon yeah. Network's Rey Mysterio show. I saw I mean, like the promo for that. I'm like, what is this? That. And there was yeah. no tag of like WWE in it. Either. Nope. It was just Rey Mysterio, and I was like, wow, nope. that's incredible. Uh, but yeah, that's my argument for Brian Danielson as the greatest wrestler of all time. Uh, maybe you guys feel different. No, I, 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 um, I don't have any argument. I guess like, whew, yeah, some of the tougher ones obviously would be like, you're, you're gonna argue it up against, you know, the, the other titans of industry, and mileage may vary. Uh, you mentioned one earlier. Obviously, Masawa is a big deal for a lot of people, and so is Kobashi. Yeah. Um. Uh, for some people, you have say, uh, uh. Inoki and Tenryu, and and what's interesting is that Brian's a, a a small piece of a lot of them all. He is. 
He <laughs> really is. He's got uh, some of every fucking. <laughs> He's got all of your favorite wrestlers in. There's his a lot DNA. of Anoki in that guy. He's like uh, Cell, like perfect <laughs> Cell. <yeah. laughs> that's not that's probably circle the best from earlier. way you would describe him, right? Yeah, seriously. Uh, so honestly, what, that's your qualifier for so many right there. <laughs> I love it. I uh. But yeah, shit. What else were we supposed to talk about? You leave it up to me. I'll talk about Brian all night long. Well, no, we, don't, I mean, we don't need another we might as well. spotlight episode. <laughs> <laughs> we could probably segue into his baby. Like Brian Danielson. I like to call it Brian Danielson's Continental Classic. Like he's fucking uh, the Danielson Classic, which they could always rename it once he's, you know, retired, retired. Yeah, yeah, they should. Yeah, I like, I've gotten used to C2, uh, but. Uh, it's cool. I've I think that the Don, you know you're gonna mark out if they ever change the name to the Brian Danielson Classic. Of course. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be sacred. I think that the Continental Classic has been exactly what I've been looking for for AEW. And not just uh I really enjoy the classic. Based programming. I mean it's <laughs> balanced out. Matter? It's really balanced out the show. The dynamites and collisions are better than they've been all year. Uh, we had they actually the... stuck to their guns on the whole interference thing. Yeah. Oh man, it's been so good watching Jay White and John Moxley tonight and that fucking clean finish. Like that really drives home how cool this is. <laughs> John Moxley never gets pinned. Jay White putting him out like that, clean out of a Blade Runner, no bullshit. Uh, and it makes sense. It's not like crazy. Like, oh my god, what is happening? Why did he do that? It's yeah. like in the middle of this great tournament, straight up New Japan style. In ring storytelling, I love it. I think the company needs to find a way to continue this balance because it's what it's three guaranteed 15 to 20 minute straight wrestling segments, and the stories are told in the wrestling. And then you have the other hour, which can do all the other shit you want to do. But I really feel like keeping at least one hour of top level wrestling. With stories being told in the ring is going to be important for the balance of AEW programming going forward. And I know it was easy because you had a tournament and it was like, all right, we guarantee slotted in these fucking 12 guys. But Mm -hmm. fuck you. You need to figure this shit out. (laughs) It's not hard, I would think. You would think. You would think, right? Uh, But fuck, this has been great. I don't know how you guys have been feeling about the Continental Classic. I I, I wish I'd been able to keep up with it better, and that that's my fault. Uh, it's just uh, uh, sometimes not being able to catch all the episodes because like they did spread it across all three shows, and that's a lot of time for me. <laughs> uh, but everything I everything I've seen about it, I have liked. I am I am sad that. Basically, there are people who have just never understood basic math. But if he <laughs> wins and he gets three points, how many points will he have? <laughs> That's I just I need to know why AEW isn't telling me this. Why isn't commentary explaining this to me? There's a goddamn graphic on the screen. Yeah. If he has zero points, why is he still allowed to be interned? I don't. Yeah. I, I don't understand the the, the, the the like. What is this Sudoku? Like, did you even play Sudoku? Fucking hate. What, I hate. What do Round Robin? <laughs> Ain't Red Robin yum. Did These people don't you, have any of you people watched actual sports. No. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the me sports either. ball. But. <laughs> But uh, I don't think that these people actually care. Um, <clears throat> I don't. I don't. Are, are I you, feel like it's a, they are bad faith arguments. They are. Um, I feel like sometimes you. What sucks is that there's one or two people who probably are confused because of the education level of professional wrestling fans, and they're getting buried Johnson in bad quite faith. Out loud. They're getting buried in bad faith arguments from people who don't care to watch AEW, but they have a team mentality because I mean. It's 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 a combination of human instinct because we're tribalistic species and and the conditioning of sports fans because they are already uh, are conditioned to really talk shit about each other and wish death on people and you know I hope the team closes down 
and shit like that but it's all part of one organization and it's like it bounces right off it doesn't matter like when you say you hope the yankees shut down tomorrow it doesn't fucking bother anybody because it can't happen right and then yeah. when yeah. you tell an AEW fan like hey, i hope AEW fucking dies tomorrow they fucking try to spend three hours explaining to you why it's bad for business like <laughs> there's no there's no you're not getting anywhere with these people like unless you're saying it so that you can feel good about yourself or maybe that you can have uh sure. example of your knowledge uh for other people to see then fine but at least be real with yourself uh like if i'm posting online if i'm ever if you see me responding to people ever or in earnest like <laughs> i don't actually expect that they're going to learn from what I'm saying, what I am doing right. is somebody else is going to see it. <laughs> okay. Somebody who I'm not responding to is going to see it and read it. And A, they will either get the knowledge that they're looking for, or B, they're going to be like, oh, okay, that person knows what they're talking about. I'm going to follow this person and I would like to hear more of them saying what they know that they're talking about. I'm not, fuck, I don't give a fuck. You cannot care. I feel so bad for people who care. Like, why? <laughs> why? Stop caring. Why? Why won't they stop? I feel stop? so bad for people who care. I do because they <laughs> they don't mean they mean well, right? They're like, I got this new <laughs> thing, and they keep Copy talking it. bad about my new thing. Copy it's like, and paste bro, this everywhere. Yeah. You're gonna be okay. Like all you have to do is keep watching. Like if you really want to support AEW, it doesn't fucking matter what some WWE fan thinks. Like. If they're only a fan of WWE, then they're just going to be a fan of WWE. And nothing you say to them is going to make them enjoy this show. Nothing. Unless this show starts to do more WWE things. And well, no, at yeah, which yeah. point, you know, it's not a fucking alternative anymore. Well, gen <laughs> generally speaking, yeah, the worst thing you can ever do is attempt to, to engage in a logically impassioned argument with something about a thing they don't like. like it's You're yeah. not going to... If you think that through these words of wisdom, you're going to change people's minds. Chances are you're always wrong because you're trying to change minds that did not come into it with the interest of being changed. They are here to trash, plain and simple. They don't want to <laughs> hear know? reason, logic. They don't yeah. want to know your lesson on this. To put it simply, as everyone will always have told you, you can't help anybody who didn't want to be helped. Yeah, can't reason <laughs> with crazy. It's the same for the... For the... You can't fix stupid. No. For the bad faith podcasters and the journalists who use negativity as their platform, the the journalists, the, journalists being used loosely. I mean, used very loosely. <laughs> Fucking, you know, you got the guys like the guy who used to own wrestling, wrestle Inc. wrestling Inc. Raj Giri. Like he gets on Twitter and he just used to. He, oh. Yeah, I think he sold it. Um, and he says whatever he wants now, and he's free to do that because he's not a journalist anymore. I mean, he doesn't own the website anymore, but people get really mad at him. Like, why is he saying these things? I feel like I understand why they're mad because it's like, but this guy has such a big following and he's not, he's influencing them to hate AEW. And it's like, the people that listen to things like that, they don't have any interest in watching AEW. Like, why don't fucking worry about it? Just watch the show. That is the very best thing you could do for this. For if you really care about the company so much, if you care about the fucking ratings and you care about their fucking money, give them your money. Watch the show live. Give them your rating. And then engage with other people who enjoyed the show. Because these are not bad shows. You can't get mad that these people are calling the show. If a dude says this fucking episode of Dynamite was bad, don't engage with him. This is a great fucking episode of Dynamite. If he doesn't enjoy this episode of Dynamite, he's not going to enjoy AEW. That's just this is what it is. I I uh, Twitter Twitter's become I know it's like well it always was a cesspool, but um the Turks. If nothing else, like if you want to be educated on the uh, on the other side, like ask why. Ask for actual opinions. See if these people, and this is a big thing, see if the people making these comments can actually articulate opinions. That's a big thing. But, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> by all means, ask their opinions. Just don't find yourself in, just don't find yourself embroiled in an impassioned argument where you're trying to convince them that the things they believe about the show being wrong are 
um, incorrect. Like they believe that because they believe that because that's that's how they 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 interpret wrestling. There's going to be a lot of people who got interested in wrestling because of something like The Rock. And chances are, if The Rock is your is your linchpin to this industry, you're probably not gonna like AEW. Seriously. But why is everybody so small? God, these guys. <laughs> <laughs> It's that. Uh, Where's all the fun trash talk? Like, uh, it, there's, you're not gonna get a why? lot of catchphrases and, and, and all that. It's not. This isn't that show, man. The dude, uh, the dude, the dude I was talking about earlier. I brought him up uh, specifically, Baraj Geary, because he had tweeted, you know, I don't give a fuck about the Continental Classic. Like these matches don't have any like story. Right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, like how? You, <laughs> yeah, and you know what you gets me? See... Go ahead. You know what gets me? I still, it, it doesn't help that he is persona non grata now. I still get people who bring up the Max Landis video. Oh God, the wrestling. What is it? What's the name? Wrestling of this? isn't wrestling. Wrestling isn't wrestling. Mm. Shut the fuck up. This guy tied together 16 separate storylines and created this story that nobody was thinking about. And it made a lot of <laughs> sense and it sounded really good. But now you think you think you can watch wrestling that way. It's like he didn't watch wrestling that way. That was disingenuous. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He, didn't, he wasn't watching that shit and saying, wow, I see this story of triumph of Triple H. Like, no, he fucking wasn't. He looked back on it and pieced things together like. I could do that. Yeah. I could create. A, I could create a excellent character arc for Stone Cold Steve Austin that starts with his run in fucking WCW, and I can tell you that they put it together beautifully, and it happened that way on purpose. And if you're here. really honest, when you were watching it, you weren't thinking about any of that. You were just going, "God damn that Triple H! He cheated yeah. my favorite wrestler again." <laughs> I was going to say, like, one of the things with any tournament, it's literally naturalized storytelling because, yeah. I mean, think about, like, the Dudley Games tournament, for example. You know, that's widely regarded as a lot of people's favorite big-time wrestling tournaments. And so much of that is based on all the seeds that you could plant in the lead-up to it during yeah. the matches. Like, you know, if you go back and watch after the grand reveal, you could see, like, wait a minute. It was boss man helping out at the end. Like there's all those little elements to it and like all these fun elements of storytelling that's interwoven, just like in a Royal Rumble match. And it's the same thing with a tournament. Look at the Continental Classic with all these different things like Briscoe and Lethal wanting just respect at the end because they don't have any points each until tonight. And then, you know, all the other aspects like Moxley, Swerve, and Jay White feuding over who's going to be the, the top dog, not just in their league, but in all of AEW. You've got all these things, and that's just in one single league. And again, it's just so much interwoven storytelling that comes from a tournament type setting. And this is something that, like we said, conditioning. I, I will grant that a lot of modern wrestling fans aren't probably used to this type of a tournament because most have been single elimination over the years. But being able to be introduced to something new doesn't make it a bad thing. Hey, even WWE has been doing it on NXT. Uh, that, that thing was confusing. Also, TNA attempted it to garish results. Um, which is just, true of most things they attempt. Yes. Uh, I just, I I just don't think that it was. I just know it was like Bound for Glory uh, aimed. I just, I don't think that I, I, I don't know what to really do. Like, there's nothing you can do about the discourse. The, this, the, this, uh, the, the fucking bad faith discourse. You can't this really. Genuous? Is that what you're going for? Yeah, but I already said it, and I don't want to be redundant. I couldn't think of it. <laughs> I couldn't think happened. of another word. I was like, "Shit!" <laughs> but uh, uh, but you, yeah. got, you got attached to the alliteration. You're just like the disingenuous discourse. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. D D D squared. <laughs> no man there's nothing you can do about it. Like I can look at it. I can discuss it. I can 
kind of turn it into an object and have a conversation about it, but it's not sure. like there's a resolution to be found, right? I'm just a piece of advice. If you find yourself on the internet, use it performatively only. Don't get <laughs> your fucking heart all up in these conversations. When I see Raj Giri say some dumb shit like that, I understand how removed he is from this, and I understand that he's not a fan of AEW, regardless of whether he says so or not. Or anybody he's probably else also like not that. a fan of New Japan. Or or wrestling matches that go for forty minutes, like or shit like that. I'm sure he wants a promo, and I'm sure he wants the the commentator to tell him six stories at the same time yeah. the match is going on, and the guys don't know the name of the fucking moves, and they go, "Oh, that was great." <laughs> I they what love that shit. Over. And how can I call that objectively bad when so many people love it? So it does feel like, well, why would they call the thing I like objectively bad when I know that I love it and I know that these people love it? So sure. if you know that you love it and you know that they love it and you know that it doesn't make sense that they're saying things like that, then don't engage them because they get paid off of that. <laughs> <laughs> they said I'm right. Therefore, I am right. More people agree with me yeah. than you, so I'm right. Let them just let them <laughs> exist. All that fucking all the arguments about ratings and and uh, and uh, uh, attendance. It's not meant to. They're not trying to help AW, even though they kind of frame it that way. Like, but they'll get kicked off the network if they don't. Man, shut the fuck up. They've been playing to a million fucking people every fucking week for the last five years. The network <laughs> loves that shit. A million people love that shit. Let these million people enjoy their fucking show. I can't tell you I, how much I hate the idea that you need to go out and find some new fans. Fuck you. This was for me. I don't want those people here. Like, get out of here. We're enjoying this. We have enjoyed it. The thing that know. always confounded me about that discussion when it comes to like, oh, look at their attendance. or Oh, look at the ratings. It's like, okay, wait. Are you suggesting that you want their ratings to get better? And thus you believe that you and like are you saying to me that you want them to change so that their ratings get better? Or like are you saying you want this show to be better? Like what 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 do you want from that conversation? <laughs> what they want is a WWE show. They want a show that's more but familiar than the show that they have. Yeah. No, that's that's what it is. It, true. It's like, called WWE. This is different. I don't like it. Where's the thing that I'm familiar with? It's on Monday, <laughs> it's on Friday, it already exists. This it's like if I is... turned on Nickelodeon and just thought this show would be much better with a mouse. Where is the news broadcast? <laughs> like, uh, we're having fun over here. Let me get my fucking 16 super kicks off and go watch your fucking cinema. Okay? Where's the sliding ticker on the bottom? Right. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's just, that's such an odd conversation to have because I, yeah, when you bring up when you bring up attendance and, and, and ratings, I, I want to understand what the purpose of that conversation is. Are you just saying it sucks because the ratings aren't good? Like, well, I don't know what to tell you if that's what you believe. That's what you believe. It, I don't know how ratings dunk. relate to content, but yeah. sure. It's just an I'm, attempt to dunk I, on you. Like, on the like, thing you like. I've watched TV shows that were great and didn't get ratings. Like, it just happens that way, dog. <laughs> Willy Wonka in a chocolate factory didn't make a fucking dime. That shit flopped in theaters. Not everybody and their mother swears it's a classic that they love. Yeah. It's... Look at all the cult classic films, honestly. Yeah, yeah, seriously. I don't know. That's why I said it doesn't fucking matter. Man. Just enjoy what you enjoy and live your life. But no one's going to take that Scott advice. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World <laughs> one of my favorite movies ever. Commercial flop. Yeah, and now look, it's a fucking it. It's got a Netflix show, and everyone and a video and game. loves it, and everyone has a Ramona Flowers in their life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but like I said, nothing's gonna happen. Nobody's gonna change anything, and people are always gonna fight back and forth. And it is what it is. I mean, let them attack. Just let them shit on it. It's just TNA it's, it's, lived it's, for it's, twenty man. years. Yes, <laughs> they have been through so many right. doomsday scenarios. And they had like they had no fucking money. They fucking shot themselves in the ass more times than anybody, and they are still on their 16th resurgence. They it is just so much easier to say, like, look, they like a different style of wrestling than you. In the immortal words of Lance Storm, some people think Lucha makes sense. It's just what it is. <laughs> It is what it is. I read a report earlier that Charlotte Flair signed an extension with the WWE, and it was believed to be one of the biggest contract extensions for a woman 
WWE history. There's no number attached to that yet. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> she is out for an indefinite amount of time after tearing her ACL, her MCL, and I forgot what the other one was, but it's meniscus. the third, the meniscus, the third oh. part of the knee. The only part that was left, unfortunately. She <laughs> lost no the warning. entire fucking knee. Basically, oh, wow. and that really fucking sucks because WrestleMania season is here and they were clearly building up to her in a big marquee match, possibly the Jade Cargill match, which means what are they going to do with Jade now? Or or with whoever she was going to be booked against. Uh, yeah. But good for her that on said, getting that back. I, that said, I, I, to some degree, <laughs> I'm, I am refreshed by the idea of a WrestleMania without Charlotte. That's horrible. You're a bad person. I'm not- <laughs> if there are two days, there's enough room for Charlotte. Okay. She had the she had one there's of the best matches on a fucking card last year. Oh uh, yeah, uh, but she uh, is, both cards. But she is omnipresent in that spot. As she should be. No, <laughs> I think, <laughs> no, I um I brought up the Charlotte thing because that comes with the news that Mercedes, uh, Mercedes steep rumored steep asking price that had been referenced a few times, uh, is actually bigger than Charlotte's contract extension, which is the biggest or one of the biggest in WWE history for a woman. So I kind of uh wonder what <laughs> what, what numbers are getting thrown around here. What are we talking about here? Like, yeah. what is she Figures asking out for? I you know, know what it reminds me of. I keep thinking that, like, like Mercedes Ren- Mercedes Renato is is asking for um the old uh William Shatner favored nations clause. Have you ever heard of that, John? I vaguely know of it, but explain it to the people at home. To the people at home, basically, William Shatner had it in his contract, pretty much explicitly. Whatever Nimoy gets, I get. I Nimoy get gets a raise, I get his raise. That's the uh, outsider's gets... clause. Yes. I was going to say, there have been wrestlers with this clause in the past, for sure. Yes. Uh, Barry Bloom's Nimoy a good agent. Nimoy got to agent. direct a movie, I get to direct a movie. And I mean, the, J, even, if you, even if there's nobody in the company with that right now, sure. it does kind of break the salary because... Everyone is about to be up for negotiation, and if she gets paid that much, except MJF, no, <laughs> right? Uh, if she gets paid that much, then other people are going to ask for a lot, and it's oh, going to become an issue. So, I sort of wonder if maybe that's just maybe price. Mercedes is just trying to get everyone paid. <laughs> maybe that's just the price she was giving, like Tony Khan. Like, she right. just didn't want to, she doesn't want to go to AEW, and she figured if they give me this much, then I'll go. Like, why not? Uh, I don't know yeah. why you'd put her on screen if you haven't. Because okay, so the sold that deal. The story oh. is that uh, yeah, the story relayed to the journalists mm. is that there was a plan in place at that time, and they were working towards it, and they were already uh, setting things up, and then, but nothing was signed. Nah, fuck that. If you ain't put your name on the paper, you ain't doing. You ain't. You, you don't get on screen. Yeah, that you in the biggest show of the year, technically. Yeah, that'd be me. I'm not. Get the fuck out of here. I'm not flying you out here for what? We didn't sign anything. No, Girl, you flying out here to sign? <laughs> like, are you, <laughs> you? I'll get to you in a second. Uh, other than that, if you want to watch the show, by all means, I ain't putting you on camera though. You ain't one of us yet. <laughs> so fun backstage with everyone. Four months, five months have passed now. Uh, we're in December and. Those plans are no longer in place. Uh, AEW and Mercedes are far apart on terms, according to FIFA. Uh They wouldn't ex- they wouldn't clarify what the terms were, but if you start doing some math as a normal IQ person, hopefully you start to realize you start to realize that she was probably asking for more than they were willing to pay. Adam Cole uh, lives in it too. I don't give a shit. I imagine that WWE will not offer her that, but they'll offer her something and she'll take it. I think she's going to back. I think she'll be back by the Royal Rumble, if you ask me. And good on the, good on AEW for not paying that shit. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Do you if think you she's want, not worth the money? 
I don't think I think everybody is worth what they feel they're worth. <laughs> I think we are all worth what we think we're worth. And who am I to tell you that you're not but worth it? But they are right to have not paid worth. it. But they are right to not have paid that <laughs> shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Get some real mixed messages from your buddy. I just think that if she was asking for such an obscene amount of money. Exorbitant, as you say. Then... Don't pay that because then you set a precedent. Like now you have to pay other people. And, and why would you do that to yourself? I understand Mercedes would be a great get and a great talent. Absolutely. I think she would bring a lot of eyes to AEW that wouldn't watch otherwise. Yeah, um, I think we all got to en- I think we all enjoyed what her non East, non um yeah. Empire stuff was in stardom and such. I don't believe that you should break your bank in that way. I think you should pay her a lot. I think she's worth top star money. But if nobody else in the company is going to pay... If if Kenny Omega... Do you think she was asking for more than Kenny Omega? That's what I'm saying. Like, If Kenny Omega doesn't get paid that much, I don't think we should be paying Mercedes <laughs> that much. Like, more... Super yeah. high level above And that everyone. doesn't mean... And I know they're going to be like, but she's a bigger star. She was on TV and shit. Mm-hmm. This you're talking if the top guy in the company technically paid that technically Mercedes Monet main evented WrestleMania, which is more than a lot of those people. Yeah, did. a lot of those guys. I don't <laughs> believe that means that you should get some ultra fucking premium because you main evented another show. <laughs> you on your based on your own star power, she should be paid a lot of money. <laughs> I don't think she should be the top paid star in the company. I don't. <laughs> She's asking for more than Tony Khan gets from AEW. I, I don't. Um, <laughs> I, I I don't. I do you believe she's worth being the top paid star in the company? And at that point, how much are we? What are we paying for? What are we doing yeah. with Mercedes to to justify that payment? I I would just say that. If we were going to pay her an exorbitant amount of money, you better be prepared to book her that way. Like, and, and, and I'm I'm I don't mean to say this as like, oh, I'm like fucking Greg is taking shots at the at the women's booking. If you believe that, then you already believed it. That's what it is. I'm simply saying, if she is going to get top star money, y'all better stop putting work into that division. Because you 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 need to believe that Mercedes Monet is a main event. Yep. Yeah. If, if, who who is she working with for that money? <laughs> like who is she yeah. in the ring with for that money? I think with the I same think, standard of star power. <laughs> right. I think you have and mind you that. and and mind you then Monet is in a position where she is making much more money than most of the women in that locker room. Yeah. I don't so know. now she's a target. I think she's a big star, and I think she could be one of the top stars in the company. She could definitely be the biggest woman there. Um, you thought Ben Baker was mad earlier. <laughs> I I just, I don't know. Good on them for not bending over to a crazy demand from a wrestler who, I don't, I, I love Sasha Banks. I'm not one of those people who's like, she's so arrogant. <laughs> uh, I hate to see arrogant women. They make me feel small as a man. I think sure. that she's a great wrestler who deserves all the money in the world. But if it's such a crazy amount that the highest paid woman in WWE history wouldn't even be getting paid as much as she is, yeah. then absolutely fucking not would we ever break our bank like that and make make ourselves look foolish. Look yeah. at that fucking idiot I, over I'm there. I'm definitely curious what the number is as far as it being a crazy amount. However... I, I, I will actually very much agree that if it if it creates such a uh how do you put it such a moat between uh, such a disparity between most of your most of your women and some of your top men, then like that that's a trickle down effect that's going to reverberate yeah. through the rest of the company. And if, and if you are not financially ready for that fallout <laughs> 
then this is a bad signing. Dude, Here's the thing, too. Move. On the other end of the spectrum from the ripple effect, we mentioned earlier, favorite nations clause. Barry Bloom is well known for getting wrestlers deals like that. And he represents he? some, oh yeah, and he represents Jericho, the Bucks. He represents Omega and Osprey. Okada. So, exactly. So you're going to have a lot of people that will be getting their salaries boosted up as well. So everyone, everyone's watching that contract just going like, so mm-hmm. she's getting paid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so it's a lot of extra consideration for? <laughs> for everyone else, not just Are you her. saying my talent isn't worth Mercedes Renz? It was estimated that they're currently paying something like $85 million a, a year in talent expenses, talent right. contracts. Uh, How much for Ryan too, Nath- that's, Now that I think about it, too, that's also really dangerous in the long run because... um. When you're talking about a company that may not be able to put up uh, that money financially across the board, now you now you've made yourself incredibly disadvantaged when it comes to negotiation season, right? Because like, what is stopping MJF from getting that number from from yeah. Hunter? Yeah. Yeah. Or <laughs> or any of the it. any of the other talents. I remember too, AEW's got a really deep roster. You're talking like well over 200 plus wrestlers. I think they'll be okay without her. <laughs> I mean, it sucks that they didn't get her. I'm not like, man, we didn't need Mercedes. I'm just like, it sucks. I think it kind of sucks for wrestling in its own right, but that's yeah. just, that's just how I feel about it. Sucks know, to see content. her go back. Honestly, for me, like, yeah. I enjoy Mercedes a lot, and I really enjoyed seeing her in a new environment with new wrestlers. But um, I and, mean, and, people... and you know, somewhat just a different, uh, a, a more different... freestyle. Yeah, a freestyle presentation. She was freezing bird, doing whatever she wanted. Um, it's gonna suck to see her go back to doing the same shit, like more yeah. of the same shit. Like I, I. That's just me as a fan. I'm sure she got to get paid, so go get paid. But this stinks, and you stink for doing yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and she, it's, it's her husband almost, still works there as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. True. It's He's, almost like a, it's almost like just a real huge uh, – it's almost a real huge regression, and I think I, I feel this about a lot of guys that go back where it's just like, oh, you're back to the old name, the old theme song, and yeah. – and, and, you know, it's it, it's almost like nothing ever changed. You, you, it's, you took, uh, a, took a year off. It's long been the feeling that she always planned to go back uh, just in the way that she wouldn't commit to more than a few dates at a time. Sure. Uh, and I don't know. In my mind, she, she wanted to leave the WWE and gain her own profile and then go back for the bigger bag. I think that is oh, you mean the rose vision like yeah yeah but she, was, she got to she got to do it a lot faster yeah. <laughs> with a lot, a lot less effort um but not having it, to make a whole company i have a whole company. it's not like it's an evil thing to do you yeah, know it just sucks at, like company. it just sucks as a fan because i wanted to see her go like just do new shit of course but um this that's, is cool exactly i mean how i felt like i wanted to see I wanted to see unchained Sasha, you know, Sasha yeah. Banks. She threw that belt in their face and said, fuck you, you booked me like shit, I'm leaving. It was very cool to see. And then crawling back after that is like weird. But I guess you feel the victory when you get a bigger, you're getting paid more now than you were back then. So hi, one. Like shit, Who's, who am I to argue with you? <laughs> and you I'd argue, I said, this about, I said this about money. Charlotte. I said this about Charlotte uh, when it seemed like it was coming up on negotiation time for her. When you've reached what is essentially the peak of the industry, I don't care what you want to say, WrestleMania, main event in WrestleMania is the peak of the industry. What else do you do except get more money? Pretty much just uh, secure yourself Other your than future. main event WrestleMania again. Over and over and again. Over and over again. <laughs> you know? Draw that card. But then, you know what? Everybody can't be Brian Danielson. Sorry. <laughs> You're none of you are the GOAT. Uh, you know what the GOAT did? He made an event in WrestleMania so much, made so much money. He said, Man, I don't even feel this shit no more. <laughs> I'm, so I'm gonna go I somewhere go where I feel what it. I won't. I'm gonna I'm gonna go be free and never come back. <laughs> He's he'll be back. I'm sure he will. Just fucking guys flying. 
What My happened? Dad is the only person I know in the world who would probably, who probably would have looked at a WrestleMania match and just went, "Why am I here?" It literally I did. Know. Literally did. I'm in the main event of WrestleMania, wondering why. <laughs> I don't even want to be. I could be eating a sandwich. Like why? <laughs> I could this be. should have just been Edge and Roman. What am I doing here? Could be watching Peaky Blinders. What am I doing here? <laughs> I, I think, uh, like I said, not everybody can be Brian Danielson. He's a goat. Uh, I wish everybody loved wrestling as much as Brian Danielson, but yeah, I don't know. I wish everybody loved wrestling as much as they claimed they did. That that was that was. I, I actually, I actually remember like that was that was my argument. That was my argument with Charlotte. It, it, it and that's my argument with anyone who reaches a certain level in WWE. Any any position, any decision you make at that point has to be like, well, how much are you really into wrestling at this point? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> are, do you love wrestling enough to be able to do it your way for less money and just do the wrestling things you want to do? Right? Do you have more wrestling goals, or are you just securing the bag? And I and I don't mean that disparagingly. There is nothing wrong with securing the bag. There isn't. I mean, that's what we are trying to do, right? Just secure our lives so that our kids and ourselves can eat. I and, understand. And, 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 uh, and understand that, you know, the wrestling industry will chew you up and spit you out. Get your money from it. Absolutely. But I watch this shit. So I, <laughs> I want to see some good. I want to see something He wants good. to see passionate wrestling, yes. Uh, and, you know, and Mercedes going back to do the same old shit is just not going gonna, gonna to cut it for me. But it is what it that's, is. That, that's what matters, though, is to have that right uh, sort of balance between passion and business. Yeah. For sure. Hey, um, so AJ Styles returned on Friday after like fucking four weeks of. AJ Styles is coming back, I swear. Uh from it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't their fault, but a lot of the sites were reporting that he would come back and then WWE would change the plans and then he just wouldn't. Nice. Uh, so he finally came back and he attacked Roman Reigns first, but then took out LA Knight. Uh I assume it's because LA Knight took his spot after uh wait, he got injured or Taken out by the bloodline was AJ injured all this time? He was right. I, I'm uh, like the real story, yeah, yeah. He had there was yeah, a I reason he was hurt. off TV, I think but he uh, hurt. on television, the bloodline took him out, and but LA Knight took his spot, so uh, he did attack Roman. Was that he the crown jewel up, spot? Yeah, okay. uh, that and the tag match against with John Cena, which led to the crown jewel spot, so. Um, that's what he's mad about. But I, more important than that, I just thought it was just yet another top guy back in the WWE right now, and they're chock full of dudes who fucking of. Uh, oh, that's hilarious! They're just chock full of dudes who are absolutely over. Like you've got the Codys, the Sammys, the Jays, the Drews, the Rollins, fucking CM Punk. Uh, all the other guys under them on the card, AJ Styles, Randy Orton's back. Randy Orton in a title match against Roman Reigns, instantly back on the top of the card. Uh, WrestleMania 40 could be some shit. Just remember, too, AJ stands for absolutely jacked. <laughs> uh, he's He's huge. He's fucking him and Randy on the same cycle, or what's up? There was there uh there was a joke that Endeavor has has abolished the wellness policy. <laughs> <laughs> Brock's ready for a UFC return. Let's go. I I'm, I'm, I'm uh I love AJ Styles. I am I hope that they continue using him in a significant spot, but well, once again we could say goodbye Anderson and Gallows. He went into a oh. fucking feud with LA Knight. Yeah. I I I uh I I hate to be that guy, right? I am not I, I like LA Knight, man. He's over. And I yeah. like I like to see him be over and I like to see over people get their due instead of getting pushed down. Yeah. Um but I I, <laughs> I don't can, know. I how... think you can I think you can rest in the in the sense of knowing that 
unless something monumentally weird happens, um, that won't be the case for much longer because we will probably have a regularly tearing champion again. That's true. Uh, I just, I, um, you know, AJ's going to be with LA Knight, and I was like, fuck. You know, I'm happy to see him in a significant spot, but LA Knight is not the best uh, wrestler, and I love wrestling. I love seeing AJ wrestle. But he's kind of old now, I guess. He can't do it the way he used to. Just a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. I mean, I'm more interested in seeing what about both doing. LA and AJ. <laughs> it's true. They're yeah. both old men. Oh, yeah. A lot of the Very top guys good. in WWE are old. They are older than the guys that we grew up watching, but they look younger and they're more healthy. Remember when so, they made it a point to trash uh, Hogan and Savage on WCW for being too old? Remember that? And I know half the guys on their roster are much older than them. They kept uh, bringing well, like, guys in their 50s and 60s to main event pay per views. <laughs> um, one of my yeah. favorite Cornette lines, him noting that the entire first row passed out of oxygen desperation because of how much Hogan and Fiber were breathing. I um, I was oh guy, excuse me. I start to yawn when we talk about WWE. Now it's fucked up. Oh <laughs> no! I, I, I uh, thought I, you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say when you talk about Hogan and Piper. Oh shit! Not Piper. Literal Hogan. sleeper holds. Hogan, I don't yawn. I just feel I feel hatred. No. <laughs> I, just, I um. John Lawson, I, and I forward... sent him that clip of like all the black wrestlers getting up on Hogan Dude, that's and my WWE. Favorite, today. My favorite <laughs> fucking video ever from that community. <laughs> the I was looking forward to WrestleMania, and the two days, so you got a lot of space for a lot of good matches. Uh, there's some matches that are probably more obvious than others. Sure. CM Punk, CM Punk said the Rollins match. Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns match. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rhea Ripley, Becky Lynch. Whoa. But there is a potential for just I'd lo- so I'd, I'd loved, many. I'd love for the referee to be mic'd for that match and just hear this Scottish and Australian, uh, Irish and Australian accent try to fucking call. Screaming at each other. What did you say? What did you say? <laughs> also, I, also, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's like a compilation of, of Rhea Ripley saying, oh shit, in the ring. <laughs> That's great. No, I haven't seen that. I wish you would have sent she that. Just, when it. she takes bumps, she just goes, oh shit. <laughs> That's great. People are, people, people are really big on Rhea Ripley as the Women's Wrestler of the Year. And I was like, she is certainly the most popular wrestler. The women's Wrestler of the Year. I, I can accept it. I could absolutely women's see wrestler why. Of the year. She was the one I wrote in for my choice. I, I thought that it was a bit of a... I thought it was a bit... It's crazy because she's so over, but the women's... like She's like not part of the women's division almost. <laughs> like She had the women's title and she was defending against people, but for yeah. a long chunk of the year, she was doing Judgment Day things, involved in Judgment Day angles, dealing Body with the Body slamming men. Luke Gallows. Yeah, dealing with shit like that. And I was like, that's, that's weird. That was a little... Bro, CM Punk <laughs> could call out Rhea Ripley and people would buy it. They buy it if she pinned him. If she pinned yeah. him up. <laughs> Seriously. Punk pinned Tozawa on Raw. Yeah, she did. See, Rhea Ripley did. Sam Punk. That's what I mean. Well, Sam Punk would too, but yes. <laughs> Rhea Ripley pinned Tozawa on Raw. Now I want to see that match. Her match with Charlotte last year was one of the best matches on the car, on WrestleMania's card, and I really hope that they keep that shit up So this much year. so that Charlotte yeah. sat on the apron and agreed. <laughs> Good job, girl. I can't stop <laughs> crying for everybody that fucking beats me. <laughs> it just keeps happening. <laughs> Good thing I'm making that bank. Yeah. I think with the right with the Rise right matches. Money. With the right matches, this could be one of the all time great WrestleManias. But the problem with these two day WrestleManias is that they have to put in too much filler. So like last year, like what I said about last year's show was that if you had taken all the best matches from last year's weekend, last year's whole weekend. And put them onto one WrestleMania, you would have had one of the greatest WrestleManias ever. But you had to sit through fucking bullshit before you got to good matches. And it's like there's a lot of good matches, but it was also eight hours worth of content. So like, fuck you. Uh, yeah. I think that this year there's so many people on the card that you can actually just have two good cards. But you know, it's up to WWE. Triple H's second WrestleMania now. The uh, first yeah. WrestleMania under the Endeavor brand, where they have mm-hmm. even more freedom to do whatever they want. It's interesting, and I am really interested in seeing what they do. Uh, 
But I think that's everything this week. Oh, we didn't talk about Liv Morgan getting arrested for weed. That's funny. Oh, that truly weed. Happened. You get arrested for weed in Florida. How do you get arrested for weed in Florida? In 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 Florida, the worst fucking state in the country. The most Florida. lawless. The most lawless backdoor state in the country. No, the story is that she was driving. Florida fans. The story is that she was driving and she was swerving. When she drives, she was <laughs> she was swerving over the white and yellow lines. Um, I thought that doesn't like that's not what usually happens when you smoke. So I imagine that she was probably she ejected the marijuanas. She was probably doing <laughs> something, reaching down or fucking marijuanas. Did she snort? But uh, they ended up finding fake weed in her car, too. And that's what got her. Like, she got arrested for possession of marijuana and cannabinoids, like f- synthetic cannabinoids. Uh, the fake nasty shit, which they mm. people in the company believe belonged to somebody else who was in the car at the time. Why would you smoke fake weed? Like, what are you fucking on? Fix your life. <laughs> Whoever you are, if you're out there smoking spice right now, you're a loser. You're on that dude. Smoke shit. some, smoke some real weed like a fucking man, <laughs> or or woman. Or, or you know what else? Or you can always binary person. Hey, all of you. But you know what else? You can always just smoke some m o n q monk and use promo code dsr one zero when oh, you do so. Fucking shill. Why don't we have a marijuana endorsement? You just CBD patents. Use. Diet weed is not the same. <laughs> <laughs> the Diet Coke. I was watching my man, Matt Stoney, just absolutely destroy stuff. And I'm thinking, like, he has a Diet Coke with that. And, like, that's just a lot of artificial sugar in there, homie. I just wanted Liv to come back and embrace this. I didn't want, I wanted him to put this on television. We lost the weed guy. Matt Morgan's gone. Liv, Matt Morgan. Liv, Matt Morgan. <laughs> 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 I thought that was odd. I was like, "Wait, what?" Wait a minute. I, I, I'm tired, and I'm like, "Did I hear that right?" <laughs> Matt Riddle. <laughs> RVD's uh, been unbooked from next year's WrestleMania. Uh, besides the fact that he is have had has had a baby. Um, he he is. He thinks he may he um he may be pursuing some professional wrestling bookings, but also Matt Riddle is very interested in going back to cage fighting. That makes sense. I kind of saw that coming. Well, the thing about pro wrestling is that it's a booking based career. And <laughs> I'm sure he was going to... I, I kinda... If you've got that competitive bone in your body, you kind of miss fighting for it. I, there's also that, but uh, when it comes to taking bookings, you also take Makes martial arts bookings, right? Because he's not like signing to a younger, to a smaller company. Like they're going to be booking him the same way the wrestling shows do. So I, 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 uh, or entering competitions too, right? You can do shit like that. But he's a little bit too famous, I feel like, for things like that. Who knows? Famous people get involved in shit like that all the time. Yeah. Uh, they let him fucking. They did. They did just let him in to beat his ass. That's fucked up. Yeah, you want to come in here? Absolutely. Offer him good money to do it too. He's like, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Count him. <laughs> count him back. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't with you. Uh, yeah, no, that's us, man. That's Dirty Radio Ooh. this week. It's a light one. Uh, we were gonna talk about Final Battle, but I have to get the bid. Wait, I, um, well, we did we talk about uh the deep sea karma? Deep Sea Karma. I don't agree with that at all. Uh, I don't want to endorse that. I think I did think it was funny. Uh, the Kenny Omega got uh, diagnosed with diverticulitis. Uh, I some people they, very much do think it's karma for that, you know, PWG joke. Yeah, that can't even make the karma miss. But like, he did put it in the video come, game. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the part I heard. It was the video game. I think he even responded to that directly. Or he's he? like, yeah, he, he, he doesn't someone, run that aspect of it. Just like just, mother, he uh, said, I was involved in the creative aspect of it in the beginning of the game. I did not sit and in the read. beginning. 
Yeah, because I mean, we all, the development system. we all know those rumors. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he did mention, like, I would not be the person who sits down and reach through every move in the move list. All right, Aubrey, uh, you got some explaining. <laughs> and I thought, well, that makes sense, as you usually don't pay one of the more important people to do things like that. You get a grunt to do it. And the grunts don't know shit about things like that. So I feel like if karma was coming for anybody, it should be Excalibur who came up with the joke. And it was a fucking Kevin Steen's move that was called that. So Kevin Steen's got about of diverticulitis. Uh, Brian Cage used it too, but it was the, they, I guess he said it for Kevin Steen first. I, okay. They both have that particular waiting for them. For, I remember for C, it was the F sync. <laughs> there you go. The F sync, deep sea diverticulitis. It was none of these were like the real name of the move. They were just Excalibur saying things. Yes, he well, sync is he's just a five joke. in French. Uh, so Kevin Steen came up with his own thing then when it came to F sync. But the deep sea diverticulitis thing was Excalibur. It was a PWG commentary joke. Doesn't make any sense that Karma would come to get Kenny for it. Uh, I guess I that, think they're all lumped together by a by a certain piece of the public. There goes that education level again. <laughs> <laughs> they, it's those PWG boys. <laughs> all of them. They all, the hope, they all <laughs> hope they all die. God damn which is, it. Which even I'll admit Jim Cornette doesn't like, like him. Which even I'll admit is still funny because like, yes, even though Omega is directly related with all of them, spent very little time in America. Yeah. Yeah. I, he, but I mean, he wrestled in BWG a decent amount. Uh, I was like saying he wrestled in Ring of Honor a decent amount. Yeah, but I wouldn't associate him with it. That's true. That's very true. Uh, but yeah, no, he's got diverticulitis. It's a, it was bad. And he didn't know he had it, but he was out there having matches. Had a fucking great match with Ethan Page. Yeah. Uh, had the weird promo segment with Jericho and but did he Ricky win? Starks. But did he win a UFC championship with it? Did he win? It? Exactly, right? Lesnar, Lesnar was doing some crazy shit with divers. Yeah. These are freak-ass athletes. Uh, but but Lesnar is an absolute unit. So now... Now Kenny's probably gonna go get pieces of his butthole cut off on the oh inside. Oh my god! Well, if it's really bad, if it's not bad, you don't have to get the surgery. If you don't, uh, it sucks though. Could you imagine? Like I have a disease in my asshole. I'm sorry. Oh my god! I'm it's sorry. Good. Don't be sorry to me. You got the disease in your asshole. Go f- go fix that. We'll be here when you get back. Oh <laughs> like, man! It's sorry to me. Steve Jobs is waiting for you in hell. <laughs> He's gonna fucking uh yeah, there he is. He's gonna he... have Wozniak do all the work, but he's gonna get he you. Was. It's gonna be a long time though, or maybe not. There's just no way of knowing. But what it does do is it fucks worlds end and it fucks anything else that they were doing. Brian had mentioned publicly that he wanted Kenny in the Continental Classic and he couldn't get him. And I know people were like, well, fuck, why would it can't be in a continental classic? I just, I just, I knew that <laughs> Kenny, Kenny Omega, no, a lot of people, a lot <laughs> of people, a lot of people bet like he be in these tag matches, he'll do the trio stuff. And he said publicly, like, I do these matches because I can't do, <laughs> I can't be singles Kenny. As much as I want to be, my body won't take it. And so I've seen people accuse him of being unable to adjust. Well, why can't you fix your style then, Kenny? And he's like, I don't want to be less than. Uh, and I understand that. Um, I I don't I don't feel right being like, why isn't Kenny in more singles matches when the man clearly stated like I only want to give my best performances. So yeah. I that makes perfect sense to me. So it feels bloodthirsty when you continue asking after he's explained so clearly. Uh and I don't know if I agree with that thing about him being unable to adjust. I feel like as, so, as someone who was critical of, of his style early in the beginning, I I I have come to the conclusion that like 
like, no, you're not getting New Japan Kenny because New Japan Kenny was the last he had of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, in the end, by the time he actually got the title, he was falling apart. Yeah. And it's not like he hasn't been delivering in the years since. Yeah, I mean, shit. I can name, I can't count on two hands the number of Kenny Omega matches that he's had. They're just not as frequent. And to be fair, they weren't even that frequent in New Japan. It's yeah. like they had matches in between. They had the big match, the tour with a bunch of tag matches. Yeah, yeah. It all never you has know? been, right? Because the yeah. New Japan schedule is basically like waiting for the occasional UFC pay per view. It happens every few yeah. months. Yeah. <laughs> Being weekly TV, Kenny, you were just not ever going to get that every week no. that she's wearing, especially now. You, I, I see that. See, that's that's something I think is madness. If you were expecting main event New Japan Kenny on a weekly basis, you were out of your fucking mind. But, bro, <laughs> it's like a video game. You can just slot him in every week. He'll give you the same performance. That is a like, human body, sir. Yeah. <laughs> he can die. He's a person? <laughs> he, he has to sleep at night. <laughs> Hopefully He's not, not in for pain. My entertainment. Right? Yeah. No. I mean, I'm, I hope he gets well soon. Shit, that's fucked up. It's a fucked up disease to have. I would not wish that on anybody, regardless of any jokes they may or may not have made. <laughs> <laughs> I, Speaking uh, of good jokes, I saw a great one from uh, the show tonight. You know, I didn't get to. I I didn't get to watch it, but I oh, appreciate. Yeah. I appreciated this because I know it. I know it, it cut to John's soul. <laughs> Somebody screaming it was it's Bully Ray. <laughs> I fucking died. <laughs> MJF and Samoa Ray. Joe are standing in the <laughs> ring, and the fucking devil is doing his stupid text thing on the screen, <laughs> and somebody the screams ball, out, the ball general manager." <laughs> It's Bully Ray! It's <laughs> just like, fuck you. Way to like, just this... destroy any drama that might have been... I hated that whole thing. I'm sick of the devil Did angle. You? Oh, you I... lost, lost you? It lost me bad. Because mm. it sucked. And what's crazy is that it has... It still has moments of greatness. Like, it's fucked up how they could yeah. be so... How it could be so tonally uneven. So swerving you got, MJF right after. <laughs> you because you had the swerving MJF this week. You had the hangman MJF before that, and and even some of the segments with Joe that weren't involving. Are you the devil? And even then, I'd argue a lot of that isn't even the devil angle. It's just the stuff we're doing. Yeah, to, the fallout to thread from this it. devil angle along. Yeah. So this spooky shit, like this week, they had. Like fucking fifteen masks. The creepers dudes from the dark out. order. Fucking John it's the hates fucking it. spooky perverts again. <laughs> fucking John hates when it goes in the creepy shit. I hate this shit for real. Like you don't understand. All these masked people come out and they're not. It, they're putties. They're not even intimidating anymore. They they're even kind of move like putties. Off. They, they get wrecked instantly. They get wrecked. They got killed. One of them. One of them was just standing there because Joe was beating up a dude in the corner, one of the fucking creepers. And then one came behind him, and you could tell he was a fucking student or whatever. And he didn't know what to do. He didn't to know Joe. what to do. <laughs> yeah. And do so he's Joe? like, he's like standing there, like moving back and forth, but he's not hitting him. And then Joe just turns around and, like, what the fuck are you doing? And grabs him by the neck to throw him out the ring. But now the kid doesn't know how to go out the ring either. Oh, no, so he, he crashes. So he crashes oh. into the fucking rope on the way out. Oh, no. <laughs> Mask Aaron Solo leading out the oh, factory students. Oh, my God. It really is. It really is. You just go to the back and you hope that Samoa Joe doesn't recognize you through the fucking mask. <laughs> Which one of you? Which one of you was the shithead? <laughs> hey, it was you. That guy. You loser. You couldn't even get out the fucking ring properly. <laughs> yeah, it was a mess. I hated it. I hope this angle ends. Um, And when it does end, it better deliver because holy shit, you dragged me along for this shit. God, how can it deliver at this point? I don't know. It's kept it as a couple individual attacks and have everyone fight each other. That's just what it's kept it. Do you reveal it? If you don't reveal it as fucking John Cena, it's gonna, <laughs> fall, it's gonna fall flat. Like, are we at the point where the obvious Adam Cole reveal is just like, yeah, yeah, get the fuck on with it? 
I think I would prefer it to be Adam Cole than a weird swerve. Like a weird. Well, I mean, I might like it if it was actually swerve. But if it was swerve. <laughs> that would deliver still, honestly. If it was like, if I would prefer it just be Adam Cole, like just stick to your guns. Like, don't try to fuck it up now and then. Oh, it was Billy Gunn. Like you fuck, you fucked it, you fucked it. Don't do this. Yes. Because then you'll pull somebody that doesn't Billy make Gunn, any sense. Going to be the star. He always knew he was. It's Brandon Cutler. <laughs> stick to your guns. Just do what you were gonna do. If 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 it's gonna underwhelm, it'll underwhelm, and at least it won't be stupid. Like it actually you, was Richard Holiday, and no one knows who it is. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> Uh, it's MJF. I think that would be. I I think I'm having more fun it's guessing what the worst possible outcomes could be. Like that's cool. Cabana. I mean, you know what? Because people do random shit like that all the time, and now we're gonna push him. Uh, I think Adam Cole is good, but you know what would really suck? What? Britt Baker. <laughs> Oh, you remember Baker as the devil the way people were speculating after that Doji Cat video came out. Really? Yeah, they were. Because she put horns on her head. It's so, just a cute... Because th- yeah. the line... No. Yes. Yeah. 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 said promos where he said it was himself because he doesn't believe in the mask man and now all of a sudden... All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. This MJF thing is funny as hell. I actually... Uh, did you... <laughs> Is he about the meat mobile? <laughs> oh, the, the, the Slim Jim car was stolen. Oh, they yeah. fucking stole it. What, how does that happen to this thing? Look at this thing. Like you will Who know when that? you see that on the road. That had to get like Fast and the Furious stolen. Like they they stole it and then drove it up into the back of a truck, like at eighty that. miles an hour, <laughs> <laughs> and painted it on the highway, then backed out with a black version. Uh no, that was it. I think I'm making sure that I didn't miss anything. The AI bots, that was funny. I don't think we have to spend too much time talking about wow. the NXT AI bot hoes. <clears throat> I'm more bothered that the the stupid video is interested in like the the Ring of Honor tag team championships. What is that even like? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I want Not- your minor league tag oh team belts. <laughs> I did I I did see some stuff of course every time Rio's online you see the same yeah, regurgitate I say oh. online like she's playing Call of Duty with us every time Rio's on TV you see the same regurgitated bad faith arguments girl. from people who don't care about the show who don't watch it who want a different kind of product she's too small she looks like a child uh little girl and i just feel like that is the worst cheapest easily combated argument you could possibly give about riho and i just tired of hearing it and even when i'm hosting like the podcast shows and fucking somebody says that, i have to jump in and, like it's a joke it's, it's a funny thing. it's funny Some now but, like, watch ray mysterio beat grown men <laughs> his giant killer gimmick I I can't I don't that, I'm trying I'm trying struggling not to have a real emotional opinion about it because first of all it's fucking really mean that is a I think the r- thing that bothers him the most is that it's a girl that's a yeah. really nice looking lady like she doesn't seem to deserve that kind of fight like, the hatred she fucking gets. From these people for the nothing problem, else for nothing small, else than her size. Because like, it's what a small it, girl, she can't beat up the other small girls. Like as if Soraya is some giant. <laughs> <laughs> Who is she? Who doesn't have neck issues. She pinned Nia. She pinned Nyla Rose like for the world championship to set the whole thing off. She's already pinned one of the larger women in the company. At that point, everything else is on the table. It happened. Plus, they're acting like we've never seen David versus Goliath matches before. They're acting like, like I said in the other show, they're acting like Zelina Vega isn't on the on the other company right now at the same size and weight, and never hears any of these things because she doesn't. They're wear not skirts. looking at that with Zelina Vega. Yeah, 
Because they don't want to say I'm that. Just, I'm just going to call have... it like it is. When they're looking at Selena Vega, they're not looking at her fucking waist size. Yeah, then they have to start thinking about... Because if you say things like they say about Riho, then they have to start thinking about their own preferences and where they come from. <laughs> uh, hold on a minute. <laughs> I just, I don't know. It's a shitty argument. Like, it's a really shitty argument. I think, as a matter of fact, I even had a back and, not a back and forth, but one of these guys, um, one of the dudes who hosts the Busted Over Radio thing tweeted, like, what is AWC and Riho? Do they think she moves tickets or viewership needles? If you have the choice of her or Soraya to be a title match, that's not Do a debate. any of them? I well, does any individual wrestler that isn't named CM Punk or Roman Reigns or John Cena right now move the needle? And for that matter, CM Punk didn't move a needle unless he was on a WWE screen because you need that platform to do that kind of movement. When he was in AEW, it wasn't that kind of movement happening. No, it uh, was definitely it was definitely the most movement AEW had seen at that point, but it yeah. still wasn't as good as the movement he got in WWE. It's that definitely said. not. At that all. said, like, is Tony Storm moving the needle? What kind of question is that? I'm saying, are they, it's a, it's a, it's another bad faith argument. But even I responded That's like, big. you know what? These viewership arguments are fucking cringe. Like, <laughs> what is AWC and Riho over Soraya for a pay per view yeah. match? Are you asking for real? No, you're asking a question from a viewpoint of a person who's only watched one company their whole fucking life. Why didn't they put Soraya in there? She's the bigger name. Because Why her neck... Why WWE stars <laughs> dominating the program? Because her neck is fucked up yeah. and her matches fucking suck. So they're going to put Rio on the show because her matches do not suck. And that's what AEW fans are asking for. Wrestling matches that are entertaining. Unfortunately, Soraya is not going to give us that right now. On top of that, they've got a she much bigger... Try. Lots of protections they, needed. <laughs> they got a bigger story they could tell with her and Tony Storm. Why would you throw that shit away on a one-week build to a pay-per-view? Rio, you stick her right in. She gets the title match. It's a good match. She loses. Nobody fucking cares. Why would you, if if you care about Soraya and seeing her in a title match as much as you do, why would you not want the build first? Why would you not want this on, uh, on a bigger platform? Which if it was me, I'd do the build. I'd do it on the dynamite. But that's because I like wrestling. Put Tony Storm back in there with other wrestlers. <clears throat> but yeah, no, that's us, man. That's Dirt Sheet Radio this week. Uh, that said, the Dirt Sheet. Put the belt back on Sheeta. No. Always. Uh, <laughs> when in doubt, Sheeta. This is I am, my... I am down with 17 time world women's champion her color Sheeta. Anytime <laughs> she wins is a good day. Especially in the Ada Wong cosplay. I've been podcasting for Settle what down, feels sir. like Settle down. <laughs> six hours now. <laughs> I'm ready <Please>. to go. <laughs> yeah. Are you to on end. major issues, Jonathan? Yes, I was. Ah. Whoa. Uh, just before just before I got here. <laughs> and then before that, we did Dynamite. Yay. Dynamite uh, recap. Can you tell us what will be on major issues? This week, we are celebrating the 30th anniversary oh. of Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Broke the format. Uh, the single greatest the window was superhero there, the window. Oh, film my OCD now. ever. <laughs> <laughs> Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's that good. I sometimes, like I said, I had said earlier, I wonder sometimes when I watch it, like, is it really as good as I remember? Like, there's no way. Like, I, I maybe I hyped it up too much. Like, maybe I was just talking shit that day, and then I watch it, and I'm like, this fucking masterpiece. <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> this is every fucking thing. Any and everything you could want out of a Batman story in in hour and ten minutes. Get the fuck out of here. This shit is perfect. <laughs> um go check out that. It'll be out tomorrow. Today. Today. <laughs> 
today. Well, tomorrow, well, today. Hey, let's go in a different order now. We'll showcase the Cold Case Project. It's a channel that focuses on all kinds of disappearances, <laughs> murders, and other cold cases. There's been, uh, within the last couple hours, we started to upload a lot more shorts, but there's also still the usual binge-worthy content that's an hour, hour and a half, two hours long. And, fellas, I mentioned this previously, but... 2024 there's gonna be the modding community showcase for halo and guess what ya boy is gonna be part of one in particular i'm gonna be featured in hey. ruby's rebalance for halo 2 nice my okay. guy voice and characters and shit evac team alpha representing get him get him what? on the bed get him on the bed <laughs> Have, have you played a a tabletop Halo? Oh my gosh! So I have gone out of my way to homebrew my own Halo D and D one shot. Okay, and I even did a Halo Bungie reference. Got seven levels in there, and the moment we were getting ready to at least consider playing it, things fell through. Things fell apart, and it's just oh, been no. sitting dormant. I have been waiting to bust that. You're out. in development hell. Man. I'm so sorry. Maybe someday. <laughs> do you have anything for us, Greg? Um, I don't. I I do not. Uh, I I I will say. Uh, I guess look forward to Aquaman because that'll be when I get on next, and I think you're with me. Oh fuck my life! Yes, I am. <laughs> we have to. We have to deal with the the weirdest unpromoted sequel to a billion dollar movie you've ever seen. This Aquaman is like two. This feels like uh when they would do straight to DVD sequels back in the day. <laughs> the wildly successful film and its little brother. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, speaking of wildly successful lads, we also got to get a 108 person scramble before the new year. <laughs> 108 person <laughs> battle royale featuring commentary. Yeah, us. By us. <laughs> the boys. That's gonna be our audition tape. This is how we. This is how we break out. This is oh, what. Man. This is what makes us. It's like, all right, rest of you guys, you're on your own. We're the guys who do commentary on Japanese. <laughs> uh, Copyright safe wrestling matches. I don't know if it's copyright safe, but it's fun. Who's coming for us? I fucking dare you. I fucking dare you. No. <laughs> so uh, here. Uh, is it TV Ashi Ashai? I, uh, I know Samurai TV in particular is the one that typically will take these down. Let's find out, shall we? I think we'll be fine <laughs> if we talk over because I think you know, usually what does it is the fucking. Usually, literal showcasing it because that's yeah. what got it taken down. Ah, man, you just gotta play it in mirror with no audio, <laughs> and we're reacting to it. <laughs> we're reacting to it, and we're gonna it's go to fair Japanese, use. Exactly. We're gonna go to Japanese jail. <laughs> that's what they did to the, that other dude. Oh my Fuck. god! Fuck. It's okay. We risk jail for content. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. We're also doing a watch along on January fourth for Wrestle Kingdom eighteen nineteen. Yes. 20, All I see 20? is, is the Radio Kingdom. Oh fuck! <laughs> oh, you here is? Where is Okada? <laughs> <laughs> Why is he leaving? Who is Sonata? Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. Oh, sorry. We'll do... The vibes keep fit. We will be doing a watch along for Wrestle Kingdom uh, live at the same time as Wrestle Kingdom. You can put me and Greg, and we're gonna watch wrestling together in the middle of the night while because all... we need to fa- we need to help each other stay awake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, catch us on uh, catch the po- Dirty Radio post show rewinds on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, Friday, and sometimes Sunday. <laughs> immediately after every major professional wrestling televised show or pay per view in America. <laughs> That's yeah, us, yeah. though. So we will see you again next week. I think it is Christmas, so I don't think. 
Okay, then I mean, it is yeah. Christmas Day. It is Christmas and New Year's, and we will be here. <laughs> we'll see you guys, man. Peace. Look.